believe I'm being heard on Spreaker and teleconference line is tuned in. And uh, you, I, I keep meaning to bring that claim. I forget you do that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Give me one more. All right, we ready? Yes, sir. Let's pray and uh, let's get started. Father, we thank you, Lord, for School of the Kingdom this night. Jesus, School of the Kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for the training, the instruction you give us. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers who you've called to equip us to be able to do the work of the ministry. I thank you, Father, that as I open my mouth, you fill it, and you cause your Holy Spirit to be the teacher. Mm -hmm. Lead us through your word. Give us direction. Give us knowledge, Father. Give us understanding. Father, that we would be able ministers of your New Testament. Now, Lord, we realize your will is revealed from old to new, but we also understand, Father, the New Testament is the unfolding of the mysteries that were hidden from a long time before. Help us to understand, Lord. Help us to walk in the fullness of what you've ordained. And we thank you, Lord God, for the presence of your Holy Spirit, who is the teacher, who also anoints us to live what is taught. We thank you for it, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. We want to talk about the Holy Spirit and the call of the Holy Spirit. When I talk about the call of the Holy Spirit, I'm talking about the fact that the Holy Spirit speaks. I'm talking about the fact that the Holy Spirit speaks. Let's look at Acts chapter 2. The most important person on the earth is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a it. The Holy Spirit is not a thing. But the Holy Spirit is a person. Amen. The Holy Spirit is what we would call the third part of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Some people refer to it and refer to this concept as the Trinity, which some people preach against. They say it's not God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, but there are all three distinct mm -hmm. persons, which is true. But all three of those distinct persons also make up one person. It's the manifestation of the Father as Father, the manifestation of the Father as Son, the manifestation of the Father as Holy Spirit. And interestingly enough, the Holy Spirit is also the express manifestation of the Son. Jesus said, said I will send another comforter. But when he said it, he also referred to himself. He said, I will be with you. Mm -hmm. He was speaking of the Spirit in the first person as being a part of himself. Now, why is this important tonight? I'll tell you why. Having become born again, the Holy Spirit is seeking to speak to us on a daily basis, and we ought to have a communication, a fellowship with the Holy Spirit that is real and tangible. And what the Lord told me to tell you is, most of us are not most, but many of us have that relationship, but we don't know what we have. 
And if we understood what we really have, mm -hmm. we could rely on him all the more. Yes, sir. Amen. Matter of fact, the more you acknowledge the Holy Spirit in your life, the more the Holy Spirit will reveal to your life. Mm -hmm. Amen. The less you acknowledge him, then, then, then he's hard pressed to, to, to show you that he's the one in the earth today that is revealing to you the mysteries of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's the Holy Spirit. It's not me teaching. It's not Miles Monroe teaching. Mm -hmm. It's not anybody else that's teaching on the kingdom of God. It's the Holy Spirit using men Amen. who have yielded themselves to his instruction so that they would preach what he's ordained to be preached. You say, well, what about that pastor on TV that's preaching faith and healing and prosperity and all these things? I got news for you. The Holy Ghost can use all of that. But it doesn't mean the Holy Ghost is in agreement with all of that. One of the things the Lord taught me a long time ago, the Holy Spirit will anoint you to preach the half-truths that you preach because he wants the people to get something. Now, what he really wants, though, is for you to yield yourself to him so he can directly deal with you so that you can preach what he solely wants you to preach. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Amen. Have you noticed when you started studying the kingdom of God, the anointing that comes on the message mm -hmm. and that is the power of the Holy Spirit now driving that message and at the same time showing you that that message is the key message that brings transformation to anyone and everyone who would believe? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, I'm not trying to lead the witness. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm asking. Have you noticed for yourself yes. that the kingdom message is the, is, is the foundational message that causes people to now understand the purpose of Jesus coming and the value of making God's kingdom and righteousness our number one priority. Have you figured that out yet, or is that just me? Amen. Amen. It's also a wicked number that you thought was a lie. was already a woke. It's, it's, it's so totally amazing. Uh -huh. so, so now, for that reason, it becomes all the more important to understand the call of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus breathed on the apostles and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost, he used the term receive. Mm -hmm. What he was really saying was, receive again the Holy Ghost that was present in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because it's the same Holy Ghost. It's the same power, it's the same authority that was present when God spoke and created the heavens and the earth. Same spirit. Same spirit. Matter of fact, when Adam committed treason, he lost not only earth, he lost the presence of God. He lost fellowship with God. He, he lost everything that God represented in the garden. Adam was kicked out, expelled from all that God represented, which would include the spirit of God. Acts chapter 2 and verse 28. Acts chapter 2 and verse 28. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Who is being talked about here? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, Jesus has ascended up to heaven. The Holy Spirit is now the one communicating to the earth. And it's the Holy Spirit now that shows you the ways <laughs> of life. Look at verse 16. Acts chapter 2, verse 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, save God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Let me share something with you. Religion will dumb down the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. I'm going to say that again. Religion will dumb down the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Here the Holy Spirit has been given to you to show you the ways of life, but the, the church, generally speaking, does not acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit except for a hoop, a shout, a jump, a twist, and turn upside down, and kick over some chairs and say you got your praise on. No, the Holy Spirit is present. The Holy Spirit is on assignment to reveal to you the ways of life. Now, I want you to embrace this for a moment. I, and I'm particularly talking to all you tongue-talking folk baptized in the Holy Ghost. It's like all we can do is talk in tongues, but yeah. when is he talking back? Yeah. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is supposed to show you the ways of life. Yeah. Know what that means? It means the Holy Spirit is supposed to show you the way of the kingdom. Amen. The Holy Spirit is supposed to show you the way of the kingdom. As a matter of fact... The Holy Spirit is supposed to show you how we're supposed to live as those that God has restored dominion to. Yes, sir. Amen. In other words, the Holy Spirit is supposed to show you how we're supposed to live submitted to God's governing reign, his royal rule, and the act of him reigning over us moment to moment, day to day. Who's the assignment on? It's on the Holy Spirit. Amen. A preacher ought not preach what the Holy Spirit is not preaching. For real, for real. That's why when you study the kingdom, you start coming into alignment with what God originally intended in terms of the doctrine that Jesus preached. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everybody I know, and I say this unreservedly, everyone I know that have humbled themselves to study the teachings of Jesus on the kingdom, the Holy Spirit immediately shows up and starts connecting the dots for them. Amen. In other words, revelation comes. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was waiting. Do you realize the Holy Spirit will wait? That the Holy Spirit will wait. That somebody said it this way. Greek philosophy says it this way, or some philosopher, when the teacher is, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Well, there's some truth to that. Because when you was ready, the Holy Ghost got your attention. Come on, sir. And started teaching you the kingdom. Amen. Now, I don't doubt that there aren't other times that he endeavored to show it to you. Mm -hmm. But I like something my friend Myron in Buffalo, New York said. He said, when you hit the wall, yep. when you've exhausted everything you've been accustomed to doing, yes. and you come to the <laughs> place of saying, it's got to be more to it than this, yes. and that statement is coming from your heart, here yep. come the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit says, good. You finally got tired of all that stuff you were doing. Oh, oh yeah. Now, I can teach you something. Yep. I've met people where the Lord took them to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, mm -hmm. and they read it, but they had no understanding of it. And then God sent me to them. And I begin to explain to them Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, not even knowing that they had no understanding of it. Mm -hmm. yep. And I watched light, illumination, their eyes open. You can literally see revelation taking place on the inside of them. Mm -hmm. Because God had sent someone to give them an understanding of what he had first introduced them to that they didn't know how to now come into what he was revealing to them. You know what I learned from that? It's true. One will plant, another will water. God will give the increase. So even when it comes to the revelation of the kingdom, God may use somebody to plant, may use you to plant or use you to water, but the aim of God is increase. It's the work of the Holy Spirit to bring the increase of revelation that God wants you to have. That's why the Holy Spirit is not just the power of God, but the Holy Spirit is also the teacher. Yes, sir. Amen. If you go through life ignoring the ministry of the Holy Spirit, you make life harder for yourself. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Are you listening tonight? Mm -hmm. <laughs> On the conference line, are you all checked in tonight? 
check, check, check. All right. Acts chapter 2, still. Let's look at verse 3. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Now underline this. As the Spirit gave them utterance. So the Holy Spirit was the means by which they now came into the ability to speak languages they had never learned. So the Holy Spirit is not just the presence of the power of God, but the Holy Spirit is the initiator of glossolalia, languages mm -hmm. that were not learned by human means. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Look at Acts chapter 1. And verse 1. Ah. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. Okay. They got to understand my schedule. Praise God. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that, he through the Holy Ghost had given... He, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How did Jesus give commandments? The Holy Ghost, through the Holy Spirit. We don't pay attention to that. So even the commandments that Jesus gave the apostles, he gave them by the Holy Ghost. So it wasn't just Jesus speaking what the Father spoke, but it was the Holy Ghost also speaking through Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The Godhead was made manifest in the person of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as Jesus gave the apostles commandments. Is this, are we still on the same subject? We're on, the subject we're on is the call of the Holy Spirit. Now let's read that again, verse 3. I mean, verse 2. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. So now the apostles receive instruction from the Holy Ghost. When, when you hear preachers say, the Lord said to me, it wasn't the Lord speaking, but it was the Lord speaking through the agency of the Holy Ghost. Now, where does the Holy Spirit speak at? The Holy Spirit speaks to your spirit. The Holy Ghost speaks to your spirit. The, unless you receive, you can't hear. So, so, so now the he, he said to them, "Receive ye the Holy Ghost," and now the Holy Ghost becomes the teacher by which Jesus commands them. Now, what the Lord is showing me is we go through life without an understanding of the place, the role, the process of the Holy Ghost. When I was studying this, Bradley, I thought about you. I remember you saying that the Lord told you one time. You said, "I didn't tell you to go there." <laughs> I, I was studying this and, and that came back to my memory that, that you said the Lord said I didn't tell you to go there y'all understand now Romans chapter 8 says those who are led of the spirit of God they are the sons of God are the sons of God so we've been ignoring the voice of the Holy Spirit and denying our own maturity yeah. as a result of allowing ourselves to be led. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's how we will mature, right? You mature by receiving the leadership of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit never leads you to fail. Right? Amen. 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 
Now I'm getting ahead of myself. The Holy Spirit will lead you into a test. <laughs> yeah, Jesus didn't he? <laughs> he? He led Jesus into the wilderness, and what's supposed to be like Jesus, that is supposed to be like us, is Jesus knew who he was in the wilderness. Yes, sir. So yeah. even though you may be in the wilderness, you're supposed to know your identity, you're supposed to know your authority, you're supposed to know how to use the word of God to come against the enemy, and you're supposed to come out of the wilderness with power, even as you went into it with power. Yes, sir. Amen. When people don't understand their purpose, their identity, and their destiny, they go into wilderness seasons and they feel empty and they feel void and they, they don't know which way is up and, and, and it's like nothing's working and, and they can't figure it out. And, and it is, it is, it's, it's really the issue of them not knowing who they are at those points in time. Mm. Sometimes I used to feel like I was holding on to by a string. Yeah. I felt dry and like like that like like that that picture with the cat holding on to the rope by its nails. Uh, hallelujah. Now in man-made religion, they didn't tell us about that experience of the Holy Spirit leading you into testing. All right. So so as soon as you was in a test, you gave more credit to the devil than you gave to God who allowed the test to prove you that yes, you defeated the devil. Yes, sir. Uh, Hallelujah. Y'all used to, I'm speaking in generality, so, so don't take it personally unless it applies to you, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> you would be going through and you call somebody on the phone, hey, pray for me, I'm going through. Man, I used to tell people, go through already. You know, I, I, I need some help. Somebody pray my strength in the Lord. Why? What's going on? Well, you know, I'm going through. Mm -hmm. I just got a pink slip on the job, and this is going on, and that's going on. Hey, rejoice. you in a test. Count it all joy when you're in diverse testings and trials, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, uh-oh. Come on, sir. You see it? So, so the Holy Spirit, let me say this. The Holy Spirit will appoint the time of your testing. Yes, sir. But the Holy Spirit is never seeking that you would be disproved in the midst of the test. The purpose of the testing is so that you could use what he's given you. You having come to know your identity, your purpose, and your destiny. So the next time you face a test, recognize that any test you face if the Holy Spirit led you into it, the Holy Spirit is empowering you to come through it. That's a fact. Hallelujah. So how people know they're they going into it? They got to study. People who don't study the word and don't study who they are in Christ never discover their purpose and their destiny. They'll spend their life in a church. They'll spend their life in, in somebody's ministry, yep. but they'll never allow ministry to work its way through them. Yep. Every believer, you are called to the ministry and word of reconciliation. Amen. If you're born again, that's a part of your assignment. Yep. It's, the, it's your responsibility to know who you are after the new birth, and then your responsibility to submit to what the word of God reveals concerning you. If I understand who I am and I realize I cannot be defeated. Yes, sir. How, how many times you all hear me in the broadcast uh -huh. where Satan is defeated, darkness is dispelled uh -huh. because Jesus is Lord. And I submit to him by the power of God's grace and his Holy Spirit. And therefore, I know I cannot be defeated. Amen. Amen. Why do I say that? Because Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says, and we know that all things work together for the good for them that are the called of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. So, so your purpose is actually, oh my God, your purpose is actually your defense against the enemy. Yes, sir. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Find a person that knows their purpose and they cannot be defeated. Amen. You see? You, you'll face challenges. You'll face situations and circumstances because people are who they are. But guess what? You are greater than them that are in the world. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Now I'm trying to teach a class. Y'all y'all cut them up. <laughs> Let's look at verse eight. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Well, let me ask you something. Witnesses of what? Now, it's very easy for us to say that they would be witnesses of his resurrection. Mm -hmm. But that's not all they witnessed. But that's all that religion told us. Mm. They told us the purpose of the Holy Ghost was that you would preach that Jesus went to the cross, died on the cross for your sins, yeah, and say that. you be born again. But the truth of the matter is, the purpose of the Holy Ghost is that they would give testimony to everything Jesus had taught them concerning the kingdom, their purpose, their identity, and their assignment as having become followers of him. All right. Hallelujah. So it wasn't just the cross. It wasn't just his death, burial, and resurrection. And, and, and somehow we interpreted the baptism of the Holy Ghost to mean that we got power now to shout and jump. Sister Jones at, at quarter to 11, you could mark your clock by her. And, and, and the pastor knew when it was time to rev up. So I feel my help coming on. And, and, the, and, the, and, the, and you could watch the musicians get up to go to, to, to the organ and the, and the drums. And they're about to do their thing because it's time to rev up. The Holy Ghost is present now. Hmm. No, wow. the Holy Ghost is always present in the life of them that belong to the king. Yes, sir. The Holy Spirit is on assignment. Mm. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. He's on assignment. He Hallelujah. was sent as the, oh, as, as the governor Hallelujah. of the kingdom yes, that Jesus Lord. preached. Mm, mm, mm. So Jesus didn't just preach the kingdom. He Come said, on, all right, I'm leaving, but I'm leaving my country here. Amen. And I'm leaving the governor of the country. Yes, sir. So that the governor will keep you reminded of everything I cultivated you in while I was here. Yeah. That's good. The role of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is on assignment to keep you mindful of all the instructions that Jesus gave. Now, I know you don't believe me, so turn to Matthew chapter 28. Uh, I'm, I, I'm saying that for... for I hallelujah. <laughs> I didn't say that for me. <laughs> Matthew chapter 28. Now, pay close attention. We're going to go through so many scriptures tonight. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All oh, come on. <laughs> we, we not supposed to be ignorant. Come on. We, we not supposed to be ignorant. The Holy Ghost, which we're supposed to be baptized in, is not just the power, but also the teacher who is the governor to keep us minded of what Jesus taught before Jesus left. Yes, sir. The Holy Spirit. See, I thought I got baptized into a feeling. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. No. Mm. You, you didn't get baptized into a feeling. You got baptized into a person. Amen. Uh-oh. That's why the word of God says is in him we live and move and have our being. In him how? In God how? By the Holy Spirit. You see it? Listen, you can go all through life working at what God hasn't ordained for you. Wow. Because I'm following my feelings, my opinions, and my flesh, and don't have enough word in me to distinguish the difference between the difference of the two. Do you know one of the reasons we're feeding on the word is because the spirit thrives on the word? 
Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. The word of God is quick, powerful, sharpened into a two-edged sword, dividing asunder soul and spirit, cutting to the joints and marrows of the bone, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Okay, so 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 how does the word do that? The word does it by the spirit. Yes, sir. When whenever God reveals to you the difference between what you're walking in and what he wants you to walk in as you're reading the word, that's the spirit, that's the discerner. Amen. The, 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 it's the spirit that is dividing asunder soul and spirit. Yes, sir. It is the Ooh. Holy Spirit showing you the distinctions between your mind, your will, oh, your emotions, God. and the spirit. Yes, sir. And what I yeah. found out is you have to reject the spirit to entertain your mind, will, and emotions unsubmitted to wow. the spirit. But if you receive what the spirit reveals, now you subject your mind, your will, and your emotions to the spirit. Yes, sir. I knew this was going to be good tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, are you get? Are you get? You, matter of fact, you ought to expect the Holy Spirit to, to talk to you. you. You ought to expect the Holy Spirit to give you instruction. You ought to expect the Holy Spirit to give you direction. The Holy Spirit is not present to give you a feeling. And what I found out is when the Spirit has departed a church, there are churches that use the music as a camouflage to the yeah. fact that the spirit isn't present. Mm. So the people now feel good because they worship in their soul itself, but the Holy Ghost is nowhere to be found. And the evidence is that they're not transformed by their worship. Yep. Wow. No transformation. Not maturing. Mm. Not growing. And, and if the Holy Spirit is present, they, they have such a rejection of him that when truth comes, they won't surrender. Mm -hmm. Somebody say glory. Glory. Let's look at Acts chapter 4. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're supposed to baptize them in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And in verse 20, it says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. I, see, I told y'all. Mm -hmm. And lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now, if you baptize them in the Holy Ghost, the only way you know they're baptized in the Holy Ghost is that they receive. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? Ha having received or accepted the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. now they have the ability to hear the instruction that you're giving them. Yeah. This is why Paul said the natural man knows not the things of the spirit, mm -hmm. for they are spiritually discerned. Yeah. Right. So, so there's some people you're trying to communicate with who are natural, who can't understand what you're talking about because they got to be in the spirit first. Amen. So we get, we get all frustrated. Don't need to get frustrated. Ignorant is, ignorant does. And I mean that the kindest of ways. Now, now here's the problem. There are spiritual people who are carnal when yeah. it comes to certain spiritual truth. Yes, sir. I'm going to say that again. There are yeah. some spiritual people yeah. who, who become carnal when it comes to certain spiritual <coughs> truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. And yet, yet in the kingdom of God, you can't afford to reject anything the Holy Spirit is teaching. Yeah. Yeah. Are we still on the conference line? I think Are we on the conference line? Can anybody hear me? Wow. 
What did they do? Jump on Facebook? Huh? There's a few. I can't see all those jumped on here, but it's a few here. It went out. It went off. Now, I don't know how long I had been off. You're you almost would say, well, you know, somebody call, let us know, praise God. No, that was somebody else. They, they called me five days late for business. That should have been five days ago. So I wouldn't. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. If the conference line goes out, call one of the people here. Call call Bradley or 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 or, or Odelia or, or Pastor Cherry so we'll know that it went out. All right, Acts chapter four. And let's look at verse thirty one. Acts chapter four. And verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, here's what I want you to underline. And they spake the word of God with boldness. And they spake the word of God with boldness. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. Now, what this means is you ought to never be timid if you're a person that has received the Holy Ghost. Because with the gift comes boldness. Hallelujah. Don't, don't, don't ever let it come out of your mouth ever again. Well, I'm afraid. God didn't, give God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Where does the power come from? The Holy Ghost. Where does the love come from? The Holy Ghost. Where does the sound mind come from? The Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. All that comes from the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you see? All right. Yeah, I see. Your, your gifting, whatever your gifting is, it's been at ministered to you by the Holy Spirit. So so whatever you're gifting, whatever God has called you to walk in and whatever he's called you to do is the operation of the Holy Spirit that ministered it to you. You don't have that gift on your own accord. Please, somebody mute your phone. <laughs> Look at verse 8. Acts chapter 4, verse 8. Then Peter, because he was filled with and controlled by the Holy Spirit, that's the Amplified Version, said to them, rulers of the people and members of the council, look, look at who he's talking to. Look at his boldness when he's talking to them. He, he wasn't moved by their authority. He wasn't moved by their position. He was only moved by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit was controlling him while he was speaking to them. Are you hearing me? Amen. You see it? Amen. Now, let's, you, you, had, you had verse 8. Let's keep going. Since then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and the elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, 
which has become the head of the corner. In other words, you builders, you took this stone, you set it aside. But this very stone has become the head. Yes, sir. The evidence that this stone is the head is the power in the name of Jesus has healed this man. <laughs> but remember, Amen. the power in the name of Jesus was the power of the Holy Ghost, not just the power in the name alone, but the Holy Ghost on that name. Mm -mm -mm. You see it? So, so he goes on to say here, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Yes, sir. Here's what I wanted you to see. The Holy Ghost will make you smarter than your education. <laughs> Amen. The Holy Ghost will make you smarter yeah. than your education. Now, the trick of the devil is to drive some people into seminary under the idea that they're going to be smarter <laughs> biblically, but they have no Holy Ghost. Mm. So they, they, be, they wind up becoming ever learning, yeah. but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Why? Because they're leaving off the doctrine of the uh -huh. kingdom, and yeah. they're leaving off the leader, the teacher yeah. of the kingdom, which is the Holy Ghost. And they're relying on the ideas of men yeah. rather than what Jesus revealed by the Holy Spirit. Come on, sir. Hallelujah. And I've heard people say, well, you know, the Lord yeah. led me to go to school. Yeah. No, you fear yeah. you didn't know enough of sent you. Uh -huh. When it, uh -huh. when it comes to matters of biblical truth. Mm. Come on, show me, show me James and Peter and John mm. and them boys going to university and seminary to represent, you got to hear this real clear, to represent Jesus, who is the king. Mm. If he didn't send them to university. Uh -huh. How is it that we believe we got to go to university mm -hmm. to become qualified to represent Jesus, who is king and who is the king of kings and lord of lords? That one of those, I know people have gone to Liberty University. And, and when I watched the president of Liberty University extol the virtues of, of, of our present president, yeah. I was like, how could you be a Christian yeah. and, 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 and be for righteousness and for, for political favor, you mm -hmm. side with that which yeah. obviously is not that which God intended, not in terms of him being president, but in terms of his character, his conduct, the man needed to become born again. Yes. Born. Now, some people say he's born again. So I've been praying that he will receive. I'm telling you the truth. I've been praying that he will receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That the spirit of conviction will overwhelm him and he'll come into the divine order that God has ordained. I, listen, I make no apologies. He is my president. Now I'm believing God to move in his life in a way that transforms him from the inside out. Yeah. Now, I don't mind telling you, I prayed that for Barack Obama, too. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. And we ought to be praying it yeah. for this president. Yeah. Matter of fact, we ought to be praying for the vice president. Yeah. Be because he he's supposed to be a demonstrated, card-carrying, Bible school teaching yeah. Christian who yeah. says God comes first. Family yeah, and then country, but then when we watch him side with 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 some of that foolishness and craziness that's yeah. going on, we, yeah. where's the Holy Ghost in you at, brother? Yeah, mm -hmm. you know where the Holy Ghost? Where, where's the listen? The definition, one of the definitions of righteousness 
is that you are to defend them who are deserving of justice and mercy who cannot defend themselves. So anytime you look away from the issue of racism mm -hmm. and you act like the only issue is abortion and mm -hmm. same-sex marriage mm -hmm. and conservative judges on the bench, mm -hmm. the devil has gotten you mm -hmm. to turn a blind eye to the real issues of society. Mm -hmm. You can't be a Christian and be partial like that. Are you all listening to me? All right. Now, let's look at Revelation chapter 2. And I'm going to have a question for you. On the conference line, you all still here? Got to check in now and again. Revelation chapter 2. Now, remember what I said. The Holy Spirit is the most important person on the earth. You ought to want to know the Holy Spirit better than you want to know me. Are you listening? Yes, sir. And if I'm preaching that which the Holy Spirit isn't preaching, then the Holy Spirit is supposed to tell you the errors that I'm preaching in, and you, by the Holy Spirit, supposed to bring the correction. Glory to God. Amen. Somebody need to mute your phone. You got your, your speaker open, and it's creating an echo, and, it, and it's a distraction to other listeners. Buy a headset. Praise God. You have Revelation chapter 2? Let's look at verse 7. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Now, who's talking though? Jesus. Jesus in the red light. But who is he telling you to listen to? The Holy Spirit. Spirit. Ah, you got it. Yes. Look at that. Yes. Jesus is telling you, listen to what the Holy Spirit yes. is saying to the church. Yes. Uh -huh. Amen. My, my, my. Now, how long have you been reading it? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is saying, <laughs> Jesus is saying. He that have an ear. You know, I love saying it. You know, Jesus said. I always yes, love saying that. Jesus said, <laughs> he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Wow. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. In other words, listen to the Spirit, and the Spirit will tell you what I, Jesus, will do because of your obedience. Mm. Hallelujah. <laughs> well. Amen, amen. Look at verse 11. Look at verse 11. He that have an ear, let him hear what I say to the church. What the Spirit says. No, what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that... That's what he's telling you. So when people preach once saved, they're always saved, they're ignoring the speaking of Jesus and the Holy Spirit together. Jesus is telling you, listen to the Spirit. The Spirit's not going to lie on me. And if you overcome by the power of the Holy Spirit, then I will give you to eat of the tree of life in the midst of the garden of paradise. In other words, I'll give you what Adam and Eve were locked out of. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Look at verse 17. Verse 17. He that have an ear, let him hear what? The Spirit says. Now, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> I was taught if the Lord says something three or more times, mm. you can just about make a doctrine out of it. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Not all the time, but many times you can. 
He's saying the very thing to all the churches. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone and in the stone a new name written which no man knoweth saveth, saving he that receiveth it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hidden man. Hidden man. All the overcomers are going to have a new name. Oh, you do start yeah. something. Right. All the overcomers are going to be given a white stone. All the overcomers, what they receive, only they will know what it is. Mm. Hallelujah. Now, now, who's teaching? Jesus is talking, but he's telling you, listen to the Spirit. Yes, sir. So now I've got to go through the, through, through, through the epistles to hear what the Spirit is saying through the apostles after having come to understand what the Spirit was saying through Jesus. Amen. Yes, Amen, the sir. Spirit bears witness that we are the sons, sons of God. God. Now, I want you to think about all the years you've been in religion and all the years you went to church and all the years you were singing on the choir and all the years maybe you was even preaching and didn't understand the depth of the riches of the relationship that we're to have with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit doesn't just comfort you. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. And doesn't just teach you what you want to know, but the Holy Spirit will teach you what you need to know if you will allow the Holy Spirit to do his job. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Now, let's keep going. We still got some time. Look at Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 6. Here we go again. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's start with verse 5. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name of the book of life. Hold up, stop, wait a minute. That means if you don't overcome, he can blot your name out of the book. Nobody's teaching that. What about eternal security? They, they tell you, I've been sealed with the spirit of promise. Yeah, but a seal can be broken. The same one that wrote your name in the book can blot it out. The same one that sealed you, you can break the seal. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that Adam was sealed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Adam was sealed. Yeah. Yes. And broke the seal. Yeah. And expelled from the garden. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. So, so we got people running around with their own opinions, their own ideas, and then they got to get an attitude about their opinions and their ideas, not properly discerning the work of the Holy Ghost to use you to bring correction to their, 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 their wrong conclusions and misconceptions, having believed certain scriptures out of context. Mm -hmm. That's why I tell all of us in School of the Kingdom, listen, God's anointing you to bring the correction necessary. And the way he wants us to do it, he wants us to love them into the truth, do it with meekness, do it with humility, but don't back down and don't shy away from the assignment that is given. Amen. Hallelujah. Where are we at? Let's look at verse 13. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't do six yet. He says, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that have an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. Mm. Now, Jesus is talking, but how is he talking? By the By spirit. The spirit. And what is he telling? Who is he telling you to listen to? The Spirit. The Spirit. So I'm supposed to have a relationship with the Spirit. Because
because my relationship with the spirit enables me to overcome. But what he's telling you is, listen, the spirit is present to give you the instruction and the power to obey the instruction yes. so that if you give heed to what the spirit is saying, you'll overcome. Amen. Amen. I found out people who fall, slip, backslide, they stop listening to the Holy Ghost. They started listening to their flesh. They started listening to the enemy. They started listening to the devil. The matter of fact, your flesh and the spirit are at war with one another. They will never come into agreement with each other. And yet you're the one that determines whether the flesh or the spirit wins. Yes, sir. In other words, God doesn't take ownership as to who wins. God gives you all the tools to be able to win. So he says, I lay before you blessing and cursing, life and death, choose life. But he never right. makes you choose life. No. No. You choose. Hallelujah. Yep. Yeah. I've got to choose. I've got to yeah. choose. Listen, when 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 he speaks, I've got to be able to hear him say, "Turn left, turn right." Yeah, yeah. And whether he says turn left or turn right, I got to come into agreement with him. Yes, sir. If I put my opinion first, mm -hmm. I will talk myself out of what he's trying to give me direction to walk in. Mm -hmm. That's why God's never interested in your opinion. He's only interested in the truth of his word. Yes, sir. Matter of fact, you can measure whether it's the Holy Spirit talking or not by your knowledge of the word. Mm -hmm. This is why many people get deceived in the body of Christ. Yeah. They have no real knowledge of the word. They got these cherry-picked verses that they, they gravitate to, but they have no real instruction. And so they wind up believing a lot. Let's look at let's look at verse twenty-two. Behold, I stand at the door. Wait a minute, I'm at verse twenty. Verse twenty-two. Well, no, let's start verse twenty. Behold. I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Who is he talking to? The church. He's talking to the church. church. No, yes, Jesus no. is telling the church. He's telling the church, you put me out. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, he's talking to the church. He's specifically talking to the church of Laodicea. Yeah. The point I'm making, though, is he's talking to the body of Christ. Yeah. And he's saying, you're supposed to be me. I'm supposed to be you. You're supposed to be the church. I'm supposed to inhabit you, but you locked me out. Okay. <laughs> now, we use that verse to win souls. Yeah. Yeah. But he wasn't talking to the sinner. He was talking to the church. He said, you locked me out. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you have an ear, pay attention and open up and I'm going to come in. We're going to fellowship. We're going to have a great time. If you'll listen to me, he talking to the church. Let's keep reading. To him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that have an ear, let him hear what? What the spirit is. One of the things he's showing you is that he and the spirit are one. Amen. Here's another way to say it. What Jesus is saying is don't just hear me, hear the spirit of what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't just hear me. Yeah. Hear the spirit of what I'm saying. Receive the Holy Ghost of what I'm saying. Receive the anointing of what I'm saying. I can't trust that just because you hear me. That's enough. You need to receive the spirit of this thing. Hallelujah. You see? Yes, Lord. Now let's look at Psalms 95. Psalm 95. So often we override the Holy Ghost. So so often we ignore what the Holy Ghost is saying. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. Psalm, 95. Psalm 95, verse 7. And I want you to really hear the B part of the verse, but let's read the whole verse. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. <laughs> Mystery. Now, Jesus said the same thing. Yeah. He, he said, listen, don't harden your heart. Listen to what I'm saying. But he was speaking by the Spirit. So he's telling you, pay attention to what the Holy Ghost is saying. Mm -hmm. Yet at the same time, Jesus was saying that which was said by David, and you, you got to remember, David is a prophetic king. Mm -hmm. yep. So David was able to hear from the Spirit and speak prophetically to, to those things that were yet to come to pass. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he's speaking prophetically to what Jesus ultimately spoke that we just read in the book of Revelation. Yes. Yes. So so even then the children of Israel were known for the hardness of their heart. Matter of fact, the hardness of the heart of the children of Israel really is part of what brought forth Jesus. Because God anointed John the Baptist to come against the hardness of heart of the religious system. In order to preach a message that they hadn't heard and to baptize them unto repentance. Yes, sir. And to make straight the way of the coming of the Lord. Now, what did God say concerning the hardness of their heart? He said, I will give you a new heart. And elsewhere, he said, I put a right spirit in you. You see it? And he said, I will write my laws on the tables of your heart, and I will put them in your mind. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. You, you see it? Now, now, of course, elsewhere, he said, open your mouth, and I'll fill it. Mm -hmm. Now, all of this is the work of the Spirit of God. Yes, sir. So, so you can study your word, you can meditate in your word, but if you annex out the Holy Ghost... Mm. You're, you're ignoring the true teacher. Are you getting anything out of this tonight? So, who are we supposed to be listening to? I told you I was going to have a question for you. Who are we supposed to be listening to? The Holy Ghost. Holy supposed to be listening to the Holy Spirit. Now, now, you have to develop yourself in the Word to be able to discern the difference between the Holy Spirit and your feelings. All right. We, we are so sense-oriented, anything we feel, we feel as God, yeah, 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 yeah. For, for the most part. Yeah, yeah. So instead of being led by the Spirit, a lot of people are led by their feelings. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just the way it is. Yeah, I feel my Not supposed to be that way, but it's the way it is. Yeah, Amen. I feel it. 
kind of change for me when I got the kingdom. Now, now I, I believe up. getting the kingdom is the reestablishing of the order that was missing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. When, when, when you begin to get the knowledge of the kingdom, order is being reestablished. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so where all of us were tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, even flighty and flaky. <laughs> the kingdom begins to establish the order that was missing. Because you can't learn the kingdom without returning to the teachings of Jesus. And you can't understand the kingdom lest the spirit give you understanding. So, so, so the order returns that was missing. Hallelujah. Look at John chapter 14. John chapter 14, and forgive me for, for talking so fast, but we need to get as many of these verses in as we possibly can because you need to leave this meeting understanding that the uniqueness of your relationship with the Holy Spirit mm. is also the uniqueness of your relationship with the King and the Kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. John chapter 14. And verse 26. Now we're used to this verse. It says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, if you put Matt, if you put John 14, 26. With Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20, you'll find it's by the Holy Ghost that you remember the things that Jesus taught his disciples. Now, what happens when you study the kingdom like the disciples did? What happens when you pay attention to Jesus teaching the disciples as though you're one of them and he's now teaching you the kingdom? What responsibility now does the Holy Ghost have to bring to your remembrance the things that Jesus taught? Man, I'm telling you, the kingdom is not just a subject. It's the foundation of the existence of the life of them that became followers of Jesus. I don't go to church. I am the church. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is by the anointing that the Spirit of God enables the Word of God to dwell in you. Let's look at let's look at Ephesians chapter six. Ephesians chapter 6. Mm. Let's start with verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked mm -hmm. and take the helmet of salvation. Now here it comes. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word, word of God. God. Hallelujah. So, so now you're giving the spirit, you're giving the word, and the word is how the spirit wields the sword. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. <laughs> you see it? Yes. Now, let me show you something you might not have seen before. Okay. Look at verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in what? The spirit. Well, how do I pray in the spirit? Some people say you pray in tongues. But wait a minute. 
The sword of the spirit is the word, word of, of God. God. So I wow. pray in the spirit when I'm praying word. the word of God. God. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hallelujah. Yeah. Listen. Oh. Now I'm not dismissing praying in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You know, he he tied my bow tie. <laughs> you know, I'm not dismissing praying in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Glossolalia, speaking in other tongues, languages you did not learn. But what I'm saying is, when you pray the Word of God, you're praying in the Spirit because the Spirit wields the word of God is the sword of the spirit which is the word of God so when I'm praying the word of God I'm using the sword of the spirit yes sir oh, hallelujah amen okay now what am I using the sword of the spirit against principalities and powers mm -hmm. I'm using the I'm using the word of God the sword of the spirit against the stratagems the strategies, the tactics of the enemy. Let me say it this way. The devil never responds to your boohooing and your crying. Never. The devil never responds to the word of God. Somehow man-made religion causes us to think that if we boohoo and cry enough, we'll move God. Oh, God, touch me, Lord. Lord, I just... No. Take the word, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, wield it against the enemy, and God responds now to your obedience to the instruction. He said, you're working with what I gave you to work with now. He looks after his word to perform. He looks after his word to perform. Praise God. Hallelujah. Isaiah 55 talks about how his word does not return back, having not accomplished what it was sent to accomplish. So if I'm using the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying the word of God, I'm destroying the enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. Turn, turn back to John, now John chapter 16. Show me what you're working with. Uh, ah, yes, sir. Right. If you've been facing challenges and situations and you're spending more time in worry, it means you're not in the spirit. Mm. If you're frustrated, upset, easy to be made angry, walking in confusion and, and, and division and not knowing how to humble yourself, under the word of God is all because you're in the flesh and not in the spirit. Mm. Hallelujah. We Hallelujah. got a bunch of immature people who want other people to think they're mature. But the evidence of the immaturity is in not living according to what the spirit has ordained. Mm. Right. Uh -huh. That's it. I, listen. I, I try not to get upset about anything. I like peace too much. Mm -hmm. Peace is supposed to be the God, the guard and the governor of your heart. Yes, Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Peace, you're, you're supposed to be ruled by peace. Yeah. Not by confusion and worry and envy and strife and division. Matter of fact, just like God made the birds for the air and the fish for the sea, made you for peace. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You had John chapter 16? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody needs to mute your phone, please. John chapter 16. Uh, you know, Mark, no, know what, Anthony, I'm going to start bringing that laptop back there in uh -huh. here because then I can control yeah, the sounds know, the and sounds noise whatnot yeah. by, by muting people. Mm -hmm. John chapter 16 and verse 8. This is talking about the Holy Spirit. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment 
of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is just. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, mm -hmm. he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Here's what I wanted you to know. The Holy Spirit is on a sign to not just convict the world of sin, but the Holy Spirit is on a sign to show you what's to come. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Somebody said it this way. I believe it was Lester Summerall. He said it this way. You can only see down the road, but the Holy Spirit can see around the corner. Mm -hmm. Now, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you things in advance mm -hmm. and sometimes not to warn you not to go that way, mm -hmm. but simply to tell you what you're going to discover when you go that way. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Spirit will lead you into, into the next city you go in. And the Holy Spirit will tell you, now this is what's going to take place. They're going to persecute you. They're going to reject you. They're going to mock you. They're going to jeer you. Now, after you've heard the Holy Spirit, you've got an advance warning. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit didn't tell Paul that to keep Paul from going. Yep. The Holy Spirit was simply informing Paul of what he was going to face when he arrived. Yes, sir. And figuratively, you can say that, that, that Paul said, thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm ready now. Yep. Yep. Went on into the battle. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's look at verse 13. Verse 13. How be it, yeah, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, that's what I want you to highlight. The spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. Spirit of truth. <coughs> I can't listen to the devil. The Bible says the devil is the father of lies, and there's no truth in him. Now, now, how am I supposed to know the difference between the devil's lie and the spirit's truth? I need to know some word. Mm -hmm. I got to have some word in me. And, and, and listen, not only do I have to have some word in me, I have to believe the word I have in me. Amen. There, there are a lot of people who've got word, but it's mental assent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when the devil comes to trick them, they have no they 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 have have no no barrier against the manipulation of the devil because they don't have enough word in them or the word they have in them they don't believe. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes, did you just say too intelligent? Yeah. Sometimes a person's intelligence locks them out of the simplicity that's in Christ. Mm -hmm. yep. They're looking for something deep. Yeah. Yep. They're looking for some great revelation yeah. and can't walk in what the Holy Spirit has already revealed through the instructions of Jesus concerning the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Some of the people we've come across that, that know the kingdom, mm -hmm. Odilia, mm -hmm. I would listen to them. I would listen to their teachings. I would listen to how deep they sound and how far away they were hmm. from the simplicity I was in Christ. I said, now, look at that. They, they got kingdom terminology. They, they got kingdom banners. But when I listen to them, they're off in Deepville somewhere. Hmm. And they've gotten away from the simplicity that is in Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look at Acts chapter 28. Acts chapter 28. Listen, I found out if you look for the deep stuff, the devil will accommodate you. How many people just walk over to Matthew 6.33? They run over Matthew 6.33 like it ain't even in the Bible. Acts chapter 28. I want to show you the 
that the Holy Spirit knows your son. Acts chapter 28. You there? Acts chapter 28 and verse 28. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Okay, now how did Paul know his assignment? The Holy Spirit revealed to Paul what his assignment was. At the beginning of Paul's ministry, he received the anointing to take the gospel to the Gentiles. By the Spirit of God. By the Spirit of God. Now, what I find interesting is Jesus started his ministry with the kingdom ascended up to heaven after talking to them 40 more days concerning the kingdom, Paul comes into his ministry and you'll find him preaching the kingdom throughout his epistles and toward the close of his ministry in Acts chapter 28, he spends two whole years preaching the kingdom and teaching them the things concerning Jesus. How did he do it? By the revelation he received from the Holy Spirit concerning what Jesus taught concerning the kingdom. Mm -hmm. right. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Let's look at Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. And let's start with verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Menaean, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, underline that. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Uh, Holy Ghost says. So, so here they're ministering and fasting unto the Lord. And the Holy Ghost speaks. Says, and the Holy Ghost said, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. Who called them? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Tonight we're talking about the call of the Holy Ghost. The call of the Holy Spirit. Let me ask you, who called you? The Holy Spirit called you. You had this unction on the inside. You knew in your knower that God was calling you for what he wanted you to do. But the one that was calling by the authority of God was the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, 